my name is James Robbins. I'm Product Development Manager at Shakespeare and also a member of the Shakespeare Super Team. I brought you down to the Warwickshire Haven today at Barford, which is near to Warwick. The river here is medium paced, shallow and lends itself perfectly to stick float fishing. This is a method I'm going to take you through today in some detail and also I'm going to show you some of the new products that I've developed for this style of fishing. Let's get stuck in. The main thing to consider with stick float fishing is not to complicate it. As with all fishing, you want to keep things simple. You want to think about the presentation and you want to think about the feeding. The tackle that I'm using today is the new Mat3 XT 13 foot match rod combined with the new Mat3 XT 035 reel. Why do I use a 13 foot rod? Well, on small to medium sized rivers such as this, this side of 13 foot rod is absolutely ideal. If I was fishing a bigger river such as the Wye or the Severn or the Trent, a longer rod could be handy due to the fact that the river is deeper and more powerful and a longer rod helps with rig control, presentation and also playing fish. However, when I want to catch a decent mixed bag of small fish like dace, roach and odd chub, this combination is perfectly balanced and works very, very well. Okay, what about the stick floats? Same story, I only like to use three different styles of stick floats. A wire stem stick float like this, John Allerton. A lignum stick like this, Super Team lignum float. And a cane stemmed stick float like this. So when I'm fishing a smaller river such as this, when conditions aren't too powerful, the peg's not too deep, I'll always opt for a smaller stick float such as this cane stem float when I want to catch on the drop or on boilier pegs such as this I'll go for a shouldered wire stem stick float which absolutely maximizes presentation and control. Talking about the line, the main line is XWR in an 014 diameter. Now 014 doesn't sound very heavy for a main line but when you stick float fishing, it's, in, it's important to consider that the tackle's balanced. I'm only going to be using hook lengths from, say, 08 up to 012 at a maximum. And the 014 main line provides a good insurance policy when I'm playing a fish because it balances perfectly with the hook length. Combined with a lovely, soft, progressive action that we've got on this Mat 3 XT rod, you find that you lose very few fish, you bump very few fish and you'd be surprised at the size of the fish that you can actually catch. Bait wise, couldn't be simpler. I'm just using bronze maggots with a few reds in. So, I guess the best thing to do is actually start fishing and try and explain how you cast and control a stick float in a peg like this. So I'm going to kick off fishing about six inches off the bottom. So the peg here is about five foot deep. And I'm using a shotting pattern that we call the reverse shotting pattern, which basically means that starting from the float, the shots, the number eight shots that I'm using, are close together, and as I get further towards the hook, they get more spaced out. The thinking behind that is that the float can cast easily. I don't run the risk of catch, having too many tangles because the shot are very close together at the top. And also, when I'm actually presenting the bait to them, I can present the bait on the drop. So I can either let the float go and let the shot slowly settle so the bait ends up near the bottom or I can hold it back and very easily lift the bait off the bottom. So casting with a stick float can be a problem because it can cause and lead to tangles. If you're only going to cast two or three rod lengths out you can't beat just a simple underarm flick. It's important to be smooth with the cast and also to feather the line so that you stop the float in the air just before it hits the water and allow the rig to straighten out achieving the best presentation but also avoiding any tangles. So here we go. Smooth cast, stop the float and you can see that straight away the floats into action and we're waiting for a bite. So I'm controlling the line with my finger. It's a bite off a small fish. But it just shows you how quickly bites can come and how important it is to achieve the correct presentation right from the minute that the float and the bait hits the water. If I was plagued with small fish 
then I'd probably move some of the shot down, maybe making a, a bulk around about mid-depth, or even lower if there was a lot of small fish in the peg. Or I might even consider putting more shot down near the hook, but keeping them very evenly but closely spaced apart. I tend to fish like that more in the winter when the fish are feeding on the bottom. Back out again. Now feeding. Feeding is obviously one of the most important things when you're talking about fishing. With stick, stick folk fishing, it couldn't be more important. You're trying to achieve, that's a nice day, you're trying to achieve a good stream of maggots falling through the river so that when you cast your float out and your bait, it doesn't look unnatural. Your bait's falling through with the rest of the loose fed maggots. I'm actually using double maggot to start with on a size 18 hook goes without saying that if the fishing was harder, I'd use a smaller hook, maybe down to a size 22 with a single maggot. And if the fishing was better, I'd use a bigger hook if I was catching bigger fish like chub and barbel. I wouldn't be worried about fishing a size 12 or a size 14 with a bunch of maggots. I just want to talk to you quickly about line control. As you can see, I favour an open face reel. An open face reel has several, several advantages over a closed face reel. You can cast further because there's less resistance against the spool. And also, modern reels now are so powerful that when you're playing fish, even big fish, you're not having any problems at all. You're in command. It's particularly true of the new Mat3 XT reel that's supplied with 11 ball bearings. And it's also got a large oversized line roller. This provides a lot of power and means that I can fish and catch a lot of fish very quickly. So controlling the line. Once I've cast, the bail arm's open and I'm allowing the line to be controlled with my finger. So I can control the line with my finger and when I get a bite, I'll trap it, hook the fish and then turn the bail arm over and start to play the fish. So I'm letting the line go with the float, occasionally holding it back by trapping the line on the spool and then striking. And there's a fish. It's a simple process just to flick the bail arm over and play the fish. So it's another small dace. I will consider using a closed face reel when I'm catching a lot of small fish like bleak or dace. I'm not having to cast too far out and I don't think I'm going to catch any big fish. But for me now I guess 80% of the time I use an open face reel for all my float fishing. Wow, look at that, that's unexpected. A nice perch, about six or eight ounces. Well, look at that for a decent chub, between two, two and a half pound. I upped the feed and caught him after about two minutes, three minutes of really piling the maggots in. Just shows you how greedy these chub are. Wow, what a frantic day. It just shows what a busy method stick float fishing can be. I probably fished for just over three hours and I reckon I've got between eight and ten pound a day and two decent chub between two and three pound. If you just remember some of the key factors that I told you about simple presentation, don't try and cast too far and simple good feeding technique, little and often, you'll probably be able to catch a similar net like that in no time at all. If you've got any questions at all relating to the products that I talked about and also the tactics that we employed today, please don't hesitate to drop me an email and I'll see if I can sort them out for you. Thanks a lot.